you try to hear it, and Guys, we got some kind of cool going on with that. I think they'll enjoy seeing. So, uh, got a guest visitor in the shop, and we are working on our locomotive steam pipe. And I had a lot of people comment when we were working on getting some drawings done of this and trying to replicate this part. They said, why don't you just get it 3D scanned? And my answer to that was, well, number one, I don't have a 3D scanner, and this is Tipton, Georgia, in the middle of nowhere. Nobody around here does. But lo and behold, I got an email. Yes. So tell me about yourself. Well, my name's Adam Sylvester. I'm uh, with a company called EMS, Engineering and Manufacturing Services. And we're actually out of uh, Tampa, Florida. And I came up to the middle of nowhere, Tiffany, Georgia, because I saw that uh, some work was needed to be done on the, the steam engine. I've been a, a viewer for about four years now and was uh, excited to have a chance to contribute to the channel. Uh, EMS is a company that does 3D scanning and reverse engineering. Uh, we also do digital archiving, which is what we have here today. Uh, we do inspection as well, which again, we might be doing a little bit of. Uh, we are kind of unique in that we have about 12 3D scanners that we can pick from. So we do anything from orthodontic brackets, tiny little medical pieces, all the way up to the size of aircrafts and, uh, and barges and tankers, that kind of stuff. Um, so I kind of got in contact with Keith and decided, hey, it's something that might help the project move forward. Well, great. So, tell us a little bit about this system that you're using and, you know, a little bit about how it works. Sure. It's pretty cool. So, this is the uh, MetroScan by Creoform. It is a laser-based 3D scanner. Uh, it is optically tracked, so this little gyro ball is covered in what are called retro-reflective targets. They are essentially reflect IR light really, really well. And there's a camera system, I'm not sure if it's on uh, yeah, the frame, but there's a camera system off to the, off to the right here. And it is tracking this in 3D space. So essentially, I can walk around, and anything that I can get in front of the uh, camera tracking system, I can scan. The front of this emits a laser pattern, and these two cameras up here watch that laser pattern. The camera system watches this, and there's a computer down on the ground that kind of triangulates it all together. And the output is a highly accurate 3D scan. We calibrated this one this, morning, this afternoon at about 0.08 millimeters. So very accurate, considering you can walk about 12 feet away um, we use this one primarily to scan anything about up to the size of cars. So, highly accurate considering the quality. And what's, what's the cost if I want to go out and buy one? <laughs> Again, why there might not be one in Tifton, uh, <laughs> as assembled, this one is uh, around 100000 So, we use it for services, so it paid itself off quite fast. But uh, again, it's, it's an investment, it's something that is rather specialized, but uh, it can be extremely useful. Awesome. Good deal. So, uh, I'll tell you what, let's get some uh, action shots of okay. some scanning awesome. and show the process of uh, creating a, a 3D model. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Alright, so this is a basically the 3D scan. It's uh, a lot like 3D spray painting. So, you're just highlighting the areas, and this camera system in my hand is watching how these laser beams are performing over the surface. You can see on the screen that it immediately starts to pop in. Uh, this allows you to move really quickly on something. Thankfully, the inside is a uh, nice bright white from the, uh, the solids in the steam. That makes the uh, scan show really well. But, uh, an interesting thing about the scanner is it can actually do chrome surfaces. Go all the way up to mirror surfaces, which is kind of amazing. But you're actually seeing this in real time, uh, what it's picking up. So since it's being tracked by the camera system, something that uh, is actually pretty cool, since I've kind of reached the end of what I can scan from this area, I can set the scanner down. I can move it around. Come to the other side. And start right back up. So it knows exactly where it is and where to pick up. So I'm already probably 80% done with this scan. What this essentially is, is just a, uh, a really fancy tape measure. Now, you know, that doesn't really sell it, but uh, that's all it is. It's taking about 100,000 measurements a second. Um, they're highly accurate and allows you to really capture uh, details in what you're scanning. So I'm even picking up kind of the surface pitting and the numbering and all of that. It makes it really nice uh, and very usable downstream.
Let's get one more angle. And that's essentially done. Uh, from here, I would basically flip the part over, scan the other side, merge them together, and that's it. Off it goes for CAD or inspection or whatever else you might want to be using uh, for this. It just is a very fast way of capturing kind of an organic, as cast, as manufactured part. So that was really pretty simple. Of course, we did the show the whole calibration process. Yeah. So about how long does it take to get everything set up and ready to go? So this is like any really kind of precision machine. It's very temperature dependent. So it has to, what's called soak in the environment. It warms up. It can take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Today it was 30 minutes. Got kind of lucky. Uh, it can be a lot longer than that. And then I have to calibrate the actual camera system. And I have to calibrate the scan head. But once all that's going, the actual scan is very quick. So you guys get to see the uh, the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> So total time to calibrate this is what, maybe an hour? An hour, yeah. So to so bring the equipment in, set it up, let it equalize, calibrate, and then over here to the part, and then we saw the scanning of the part was just no problem. And uh, one thing I was going to ask you, because I know uh, I've already had one question on this, because uh, Adam Boone, I don't know if you watch Adam Boone, yes, they, 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 yeah. they've got a little system at work that they use. It's kind of, I don't think it's weird as uh, sophisticated as this one, but they have to stitch everything together. Yes. This system actually does that on the fly. It does it on the fly. Yeah. That's the advantage of that camera system that's tracking everything. It just kind of keeps an eye on what you're doing in your workspace and it keeps everything in line. Uh, it makes it very quick to do even large parts. Uh, so you can, it's, it's very nice because you can scan things on each end of a bench. You don't have to scan anything in between and they would be related to each other. It's just a way of setting up what's called a portable metrology station, which essentially what we're doing here is just very fast, very high rate metrology. It's blowing my mind. This is really, really, really cool. The cool thing is after three years, it still blows my mind. It's still <laughs> amazing to see that first scan pop in. So. so now that we've got this right here, this actually is going to kick out a .stl file, which is basically a 3D model that you can send to like a 3D printer. You know, we could, if we wanted to, send this to a 3D printer as it is but now. In, in your line of work, what would be your next step with this? Uh, my next step it would basically be reverse engineering. So the, the goal is to do something with this. And in order to do something with this in our day and age, a lot of that time, it means CAD. So I would take this into a specialized program that we use at EMS called DesignX. It's essentially SOLIDWORKS with a very fancy front end for dealing with massive amounts of scan data. The file that I just created was a gig. It just that fast was a gig of data. The STL that I output would probably be around 150 megs. Uh, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of data points that have to be dealt with, but these are all measurements that can be used, and we'll use DesignX to actually make the CAD. And we can get very accurate CAD of this, and then that way it's basically reverse engineered and archived for future use. So we have to go back and modify it or remake a new one. And enlarge it or send it off or whatever you need to do. You now have a digital file that's ready and clean and can be turned into a drawing. So that's basically what we do next is reverse engineer this. And then after that, down the line, if the casting was made, we could even then use that CAD that we generated and compare the casting. We could scan the casting and compare the casting to the CAD and see, hey, did this cast correct? Is it, is it going to work? Before even going out and putting it on any kind of machinery or, in this case, on the train, the locomotive, excuse me, uh, you would know that it's, it's going to fit. So that's, that's basically what we do uh, after this. An interesting. Before I got in contact with and through uh, Charles Marlin, who does a lot of CAD work for me, he's a SOLIDWORKS guru guy that really enjoys drawing stuff. We've actually already created a 3D model from blueprints and from measurements that I was able to provide him, but you know, obviously it wasn't a perfect match. We, the alignment was actually really, really good, and, and really Charles did an excellent job of getting really close without having the part in front of him just looking at videos and pictures. But in this case, we, we can actually take the, the this file, he can pull it in and actually compare his drawing to this. And in this case, it would probably be easier for him to modify the existing CAD than it would be to go there and just recreate it from scratch. So uh, I think that's what we're going to probably use this for. So, uh, but anyway, again, this really, really neat technology. So uh, just a little bit more about your company and what have you. So I don't know if you can name names, but what kind of, what, maybe not actual names, but what kind of customers uh, would oh. use this kind of service that y'all have? <laughs> We have a little saying in the, in the shop, we do everything from uh, supermodels to supercars and <laughs> the occasional sewage pump. Uh, 
We do a little bit of everything. We do things for theme parks. We do things for national defense. We do things for you know, military contractors, for uh, fabrication shops. We just did a, a swing case for a large crane where it connects the body of the crane to the tracks. We inspected that. So we basically do just about everything. Um, chances are if you have something that you need scanned, we can do it. If not, then we you know somebody who can. So that's generally what we do. We're kind of everywhere. We have a lot of knowledge about all sorts of different industries. Uh, and it allows us to move very quickly and produce really good results with the opportunities and just the experience behind us to, to do it. We've got what are we now 15 years, 15,000 projects. So uh, uh, we've seen a little bit of everything. I imagine. I'm not lying about super malls, super cars, and the same cult. We've got some stories to tell. But yeah, we're, uh, we're out in Tampa, Florida, right next to the fairgrounds. Uh, it allows us, you know, it's just it's a nice area to be. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, pretty much, if you need something scanned for reverse engineering, inspection, uh, a lot of inspection, uh, digital archiving, all sorts of stuff, 3D printing. We have a fleet of 3D printers as well. We can use our data and get your prints. It's, Really, a pretty cool business to be in. I'm liking the kinds of industries we serve. It's a lot of neat stuff. Very good. Well, I greatly appreciate your day, you yeah. and your company's willingness to come and do this uh, at the museum. And uh, like I said, we're trying to keep this stuff preserved. Mm -hmm. and, and this is going to be a great solution to be able to help us get this. Because this is really kind of a complicated part to deal with. Yeah. It is yeah. simple, but. <laughs> There's a lot of geometry in this. Yeah. So we greatly appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for coming up. Glad to come up here. Nice to see shop. It's been yeah. great. And, uh, and anyway, we're going to be continuing on this project, guys. And as always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and then leave us some thumbs up, comments, what have you. You might have to get in the look at the comments in the lot. <laughs> <laughs> I won't know the answer. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.